So then what next? What do we have next? We have uvular here and then we have pre-nasalized uvula stop. I think the, <laughs> the protoform for 21 for the whole family must be my name, which I'm very touched and flattered. The question is, is it going to be uvular or velar? <sighs> YouTube. We have our work cut out for us. I have to tell you. We are reconstructing, well, if you haven't seen the earlier videos in this series, please go see them first because I think it'll make a lot more sense. Basically what we're doing is we're reconstructing a proto-language for a family of conlangs and whoo hoo, ha, whoo, oh boy. Well, you'll see, let's, let's go back in, shall we? All right, so we've got a lot of proto-FGH reconstructed. I think our next step is just to finish the segmental reconstructions, clear up some indeterminacies about the consonants, and then work on the tone. Yeah. Yeah, can you imagine doing this with uh, Proto-Indo-European? Must have been fun. All right. So then what next? What do we have next? We have this LR thing. So oh, that's not reconstruct anything yet. We have RLL in this one. And then we have an, this is another instance of our, oh no, this is a new cognate set for vowels, isn't it? So we have O, 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 and this is in 21, 21. And then we have pre-nasalized velar stop, pre-nasalized uvular stop, and just a velar stop. And finally, we have null. Maybe I can just write, yeah, I'll just write it. That's better. Um, R, R. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yes, I think the, <laughs> the protoform for 21 for the whole family must be my name, <laughs> which I am very touched and flattered at. Um, I think we have this RLL correspondence, which I'm going to say L because we need R in similar circumstances here. And so we then have the question of prenasalization. I think we need it for the proto language. Um, the question is, is it going to be uvular or velar? That I don't know. But something like this. And then... And then the question is, what are we going to do? Oops. What are we going to do with this? We have a bunch of these different mid-back vowel correspondences. This is clearly O, but then we have this long O, which shows up open in some, open in FG, closed in H. And then we have this short O, which shows up as open in FH and closed, no, open in G and closed in FH. And we then also have in 27, we have an open O in all languages. Although that might be the influence of R. R makes vowels do funny things usually. Um, so this is after Q and before R. And 
and this one in 21 is word final after G. Maybe a prenasalized, maybe a. Oh no, sorry, it's after R. Mm hmm. Interesting. So I think what we have here is something like, and, and I think Quain pointed this out, something like long, and then what to do with this one? Well, this, this one here can be open O. And as for this, I'm not sure. Maybe we could call it capital O for now, something like this. So that's a bit algebraic. And, but you know, we'll have to just deal with it for now. Quain, do you think it's, it's some effect of the R? on the quality of that vowel. I think that's prob plausible. Um, so here we have something like, I think this is going to be iskor. I don't put a, um, I don't make this aspirated because we don't see aspiration in H. Only when we see aspiration in H do we need to posit it. Otherwise, we get it purely from the aspiration of the um, adjacent S. Uh, we may have some, yeah, we may have in where, where, where? In 21, we may have some vowel lowering or raising actually. Um, because it's word final. But if that's true, then we'd expect this to be, ah, but this is also was originally an R. So we could say that the outcome of OR in F, sorry, of OR, OR, is O, but O, Is O, maybe. Or maybe the opening is due to, so maybe we get O opens up before R. But if so, it did it in all the languages and probably did so in the proto language. So I don't think we. I don't think we should deviate from that. Uh, finally, 29 is pretty easy, you know. Um, and 25 is pretty easy now that we've got all of our ducks in a row. Nespe. And then finally, ooh, this is new. Yeah. Nga. Nga. And nga. Based on 23. Okay. All right, we will get to tone very shortly. I just want to finish our, our segmental reconstructions. When I look at this, this looks very similar to the alternation in 47, or in, in 21, rather. But here we go into a palatal nasal. And I wonder... I 
I wonder if that indicates that we had a velar. If we had a velar, so basically this is our original, and then it goes to a palatal nasal and F, but only when it's intervocalic. Yeah, I think that makes sense. All right. I'm happy with that. And so then we get pong. And then we have an E or an E. Hmm. It's true that E could could have triggered a palatalization, but it doesn't do so anywhere. Oh, or does it? Do we even have any instances of it anywhere else? We have E, and it seems perfectly happy with um, uvulars in front of it. Mm. Yeah, it's possible that that's also the case. Mm. Queen, that's right. That makes a lot of sense. So E is being lowered to if by the uvular. Let's just do a quick check to make sure that that's also the case elsewhere. Um, we have uvular here, uvular effect after ka. Yep, I think that's likely. So e to e after q or after, <laughs> I'm not gonna do the actual features. <laughs> that is unnecessary. So something like this. And then we have, mm, backing to a velar in G only. Okay. And then the question is, so if, if we're having this backing in language G, then I think our X cover phoneme I don't remember, do we have a correspondence for that? Um, which is uvular fricative, uvular fricative, velar fricative, which we see in 17 and 16. Well, actually we have two of these correspondences. We also have the one in Hlongro, um, which is so this is word initial before l and otherwise it's vowel word initial before vowel so maybe Maybe yeah i'm I'm torn because if we we're backing in G, we should also back this um velar in G, but then why does it also back in f? That's something I can't totally explain yet. I am Hlongro because it's a cluster. Yeah, clusters do weird things, but it's weird that if we have an original uvular, sorry, if we have an original original velar and it goes to a uvular only in clusters with R or with R, 
or la. I don't. Or sorry, no, I got that backwards. We have an original velar, and it uvularizes except when in clusters. Well, that does actually sound a bit more reasonable, but we don't have any other uvularization in this language. Although, oh, we do. We have kamba. Okay, I'm happy with. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that. So we get, I don't know, I'm not totally happy with that, honestly. So you think the uvulars were original and then we, okay, so if that's the case. But if that's the case, it's a long way from to nya. Unless we just appe appeal to the magic power of high front vowels. And so then we would ha reconstruct this and then have in F and H, we'd have nga. To nga. And then in H we would have ng going to g. So that changes fed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. Starting it as a uvular does, I think, work. And then F, 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 F. Okay, so have have we accounted for this? We have go. And we go in this order. And then F goes from the uvular to the velar in clusters. So I don't know, we have it before L so far. I know, poor Sotten. This is this must be painful for you. <laughs> um I think this is viable. Uh, I think this is very viable. So we need to keep ourselves in some semblance of order here. And then we just need to say that um, this is backing after a uvular, right? Okay. Okay. And then did we make a decision, make up our minds about the vowel? All right, so we, we're, we're gonna make this into a uvular. Gonna make this into a, uv a uvular. Oh my goodness. <sighs> All right. So we have two more things left to do. One uh, of the segmental phonology. Oh no. Okay, we have like four things left to do. <laughs> we have to deal with these open O's. Are we going to reconstruct It seems to me that branch H just categorically does not like low mid vowels. Ah, uh, no, but it does here. Hmm. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. Um, okay, maybe we'll try and solve this. So we have um, wethre. 
T, we have the th. So let's consider this. We have th, we have, oh, this is, this is weird. We have to consider the whole cluster. Th, pl, and sp. Now we, Okay, I've got some. I've got some chat here. Why is twenty three nasalized but not twenty one? Oh yeah, Queen answered that. Okay, good. Um, twenty one versus twenty three might just. Uh, I don't think that we are doomed by the the by twenty one versus twenty three for the uvular hypothesis. Could be wrong. Um, I'm going to try and figure out the consonantism of of seven though. What could this be? Um, West B. We like the spi here. Or rather, when I say we like the spi here, that's a meaningless statement. What I mean is that branch H light is okay with these S consonant clusters. Um, we don't see aspiration, but we wouldn't expect to see it on a trill. Uh, and instead of losing the S, if this were indeed a proto S, we would get we have this th, which in, leads me to believe that it's probably not the th. Yeah, let's let's take a look outside of the. Uh, so we get things like pl, bl, pth, metathesis nightmare, and pta. So this, I kind of like. So we have good evidence that there's a p in there, and then some kind of coronal. And in all non-metathesizing language, the labial comes first. So I think we are going to have something like p. And maybe something like ptra. Thanks, glad you could join us, Thomas. Um, this doesn't feel right. Yeah, let's call it pata. Let's take Queen's, um, follow Queen's lead here. And I think that's solid. Although, how we go from pata to thra. This is what bothers me here. I think this is going to end up being something like, because if we look at the other languages, we have the L, L, H, okay, that's weird, but we have all these L's there, lateral fricative. Mm, maybe it's something like Ptla, but then why do we get Spa? The whole thing doesn't make sense. How do we get thra? Ugh, I think I'm gonna have to stop. I don't think I can do any more. My brain is now turned into some sort of a, I don't know, some sort of a jello salad. Pl, pl, psa. Yeah, sla could become sa. Or tha. Oh, maybe this is, what's the language that has, la, it's, it's, is it some of the Semitic languages, right? I'm, 
could be the ancient one, one of the ancient ones where we have la and sa dancing around. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. As I said, jello salad. I think we're going to have to pick it up next time. But you're right. We do have this other S cover consonant, which I think might hold the key. If we have the lateral fricative, that would probably work. That's something that can uh, become either la or uh, either th or s, as Moon Truther points out. Yeah, classical Arabic. Maybe that's th what I'm thinking of. Um, I get these snippets of things that stick into my head, but <laughs> just the snippet. All right, as a as an initial guess, let's let's reconstruct these. Hla and pla. This might be over bold, but I think we've earned it. And we can always come back and do some more, which is exactly what we'll do. All right, friends. This has been remarkably enjoyable. I'm sorry we did not finish, but with this uh, with this kind of setup, oh my goodness, I don't see how we could finish. Thank you again so very much, not only to the chat, but to Sotten, the rest of Team A, for all their hard work. This has been just, I don't know, I can't imagine a more fun thing to do. Um, and I will see you all there. I will see you on Discord, on Twitter, on the, in the comment section, all those good places. Thank you again so much, and I will see you soon.